Okay, I thought I'd do a, a quick little video on making your own texture mats. Uh, I've been making quite a lot of them. And um, I took a class with Helen Brill online on making bowls. And she encouraged us to make our own texture mats. And she's got some great tips and things that I won't be sharing. But um, I've come up with my own sort of version of it. And um, so I think I can probably share that. I'm going to leave a link to uh, Helen Briel's um, website where you can purchase your own uh, bowl making um, course and other courses that she has. And she's amazing. She's, her courses are very detailed and uh, not that expensive. Well worth the price. But anyway, so once I made a, a few of the texture mats that she um, suggested in, in her class... Uh, let's see if I can find them. Uh, you know, these type of things. Um, and uh, I didn't have some of the materials that she had. So then I started looking for different things that I could use. And I used cloth. And I used, uh, this one is uh, some type of a big shell. <laughs> that I just pressed into the clay. And this one was made with a walnut shale, just sort of rolled back and forth in sort of a, a spiral pattern. And actually it makes gorgeous beads. And then just somewhere I just started, um, you know, playing around with uh, uh, my tools and making impressions and stuff. This one was made with uh, uh, yarn and uh, it came out quite nice. And let's see, uh, the one that seems to be getting a lot of attention is the one that I made with the sea urchin. And I'm going to show you how to do that one. And then I made one with um, a little charm, dragonfly charm. This one comes from uh, uh, Beetaholic and I bought it on Amazon. Um, I took a look last night and they don't have it on our Canadian Amazon anymore, but there are other dragonfly charms that that you can find on eBay and different places like that. Uh, okay, that's another cloth one. That's uh, the walnut shell just rolled back and forth. Um, this is a sea urchin done with uh, an air dry clay, with ma Macon's clay. And uh, it, it came out quite nice. It's uh, flexible and it does go through the pasta machine without a problem. And that's just lines. Um, this one is also just lines that were put in in a pattern. And this one is um, uh, made with uh, a real ammonite fossil. And uh, I'll, I'll do a quick demonstration on how to do them. So what I do differently, though, than uh, uh, this is the resulting piece from the ammonite. Uh, what I do differently than uh, Helen is, um, is how I prepare my clay. So you need a good strong clay and um, I've tried uh, Primo scraps because I always have lots of them and uh, recently I've tried souffle and uh, this one is souffle and it's it's quite amazing <laughs> like you can roll it into a tube if you wanted to so that's really great this one is Primo and it still flexes but much much harder to flex uh, so that's one thing um, my recipe for Primo scrap is uh, I put a little bit of Sculpey Mold Maker in it. So if I have uh, like a piece of scrap like this, this one's rolled on the third thickest setting, um, I take a slice of the Mold Maker, not a terribly lot of it, but so that's not even, not an even slice here. So I'd, I would say an eighth of an inch maybe. And I'd add that to that and work that in with the pasta machine. And uh, probably it, it takes quite a bit to get it totally incorporated. So you might be, you know, putting it through about 20 times or something. Or similar to what you do with a Skinner blend to make sure it's well, well blended. So um, it'll come out. This is a piece that's already blended that I can use. It, it is much softer. And um, I don't know, I just, I feel like it's, uh, it stays a little bit more flexible than without the mold maker. So that's what I was doing. 
and uh, with the souffle though you don't have to put anything in it you just mix up your souffle um, be great if you had scraps I don't have any scraps because I'm just starting to work with souffle but I'll tell you I'm really impressed with this clay it's um, uh, Cindy Holt did these great um, bracelets with uh, ribbon clamps and stuff like that and their straps are in souffle and and you know that's only one thickness uh, the thickest setting on on my pasta machine and they're really really um, strong so um, I really like that now this one I, I polished which <laughs> you don't really need to do with souffle uh, it's got a, a lovely sort of matte texture on its own but I had put some scratches on it and so I ended up polishing it so you know you can still do that the uh, centerpiece of this bracelet is made with my ammonite um, texture mat and then colored with pan pastels and and probably a little bit of uh, a solid black acrylic paint right on the very top to get it as dark as I wanted it so that's so that's that um, Okay, so I'll mix that into my clay, and I'll be back in a second, and uh, we'll make a, a texture mat. Okay, I've got my two sheets here uh, pretty much ready to go. And uh, there's going to be a, a couple things you're going to do differently depending on whether you're using uh, a regular clay with mold maker in it or you're using souffle. So the regular clay, um, you're going to want to dust it with, uh, with a powder so that um, what you're using isn't going to stick to it. Sorry about the noise here. So I keep my cornstarch in a little baby sock and just tied with an elastic and uh, just enough of it will come out as you're pouncing it and then you can use the sock to sort of rub it in and uh, get it so that it's not so sticky on the outside. So uh, this one with the souffle, I'm not going to do that. I don't think it's necessary. Nothing seems to stick to souffle very well so that's an advantage in this case. So with this one I'm going to show you how to make uh, deep impressions. So I'll do another ammonite, uh, uh, ammonite and maybe I'll stick some dragonflies in. You know like I, I don't know if I'm going to use this texture mat because I already have these but I want to show you how to do it. Uh, this one I'm going to do another uh, sea urchin. So we'll start with the sea urchin first. So again if this was uh, Primo or uh, Fimo or some other type of uh, clay uh, dust it with uh, powder first. So I'm just, I've got a large ammonite here um, and they come in lots of different sizes and stuff like that. Um, this one worked out really well for me. I have another one that's got great big, um, you know, uh, spikes on it if you want to call it that. And uh, your clay would have to be too deep to get your, your proper impression. So I've rolled this clay out, it's about two millimeters, so it's rolled on the third setting on my pasta maker. Uh, that's probably about as thick as you want to go with a, a texture mat because it will be a little harder to get into the, um, uh, into the pasta machine. Um, for this, I think it's going to work out okay because as you're rolling the ammonite across, you're flattening out the clay, so you're actually making it thinner. Um, which is uh, beneficial but I still I need enough thickness so that I don't go straight through uh, and create holes which can happen and did happen on uh, this one and so what I ended up doing uh, where I had made little holes I just put little balls of clay in there and uh, and then uh, used the ball tool to sort of uh, make another little little mark it gives you a slightly different texture when I did the Makin's one, uh, I ended up uh, 
well, you can almost see where I, I've gone through a little bit, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't enough that it would compromise the strength of your mat. So I just left it, and it, it actually gives me a nicer impression, um, a little bit more realistic. So uh, I don't know if I sh I showed you here. This is uh, the recent pendant that I did with uh, the ammonite. Um, I'm going to talk about. Um, I got some mica powder on it. <laughs> I'm going to talk about doing both the uh, an inny and an outy texture mat. Uh, so this is uh, uh, both. So I get the impression coming out or I get the impression coming in. It gives you a totally different look. So that's something you're going to probably want to consider. But anyways, let's just get on with this. I don't know if I'm going to complete the whole thing because I already have these. But uh, So I just took it and I'm just going to roll it. Um, you know, straight up and down across my surface, trying not to smear it. And I did get through a little bit, not bad. Uh, if if I see that first line and put my ammonite beside it, I'm always surprised how much space I have in between. So I try to actually just sort of just just uh, run it alongside. So I went offline there. And of course, if I'm making a smaller one, it's easier. And a little bit of spacing is probably nice. So really, how, how simple is that? Um, so that's that's about as far as I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to tell you a couple of things. When you put it on your tile, and you do want to bake these on a tile, because it'll really help keep them flat, um, make sure that you're not trapping any air. If you see an air bubble, you might want to have to pull that up and then smooth it out with your finger. Work out all those air bubbles, because they'll leave lumps. Um, and then the other thing is uh, bake them at the regular temperature. That uh, Make sure that your oven gets up to... Uh, it's 275 for uh, uh, Fahrenheit for uh, uh, um, souffle and primo. So make sure it uh, it reaches that temperature. You know, you, you need to know your oven. And I like to bake these even longer than, uh, than I normally bake a piece. So I'm baking them for at least an hour and a half. Um, I don't preheat. So if you preheat, you might, you know, you might be able to cut some of that time down. But uh, the longer you bake it for the more flexible it's going to be. And so like this one, this one is Primo and uh, and it's it's very flexible. So there's that. Now the other thing, let me just cut this one. I might just keep this one as a, as a short one. Um, okay, so I want to make one now with the dragonfly. So we'll do that on this side. And any charms will work. So I'm just going to take it and press it in. Um, let's find one of these charms. So there, yeah, here we go. So this is the way it came out, and it's got a little um, circle here to hang it from. I just used my nippers and uh, nipped off that circle. It's got a little one on the back, but I kind of like it. It's kind of like the end of his tail, so that's fine. So press it in good and firm. And let's just pull this up here. I'll get this one out of the way. Because I don't want to wreck that as I'm doing this. And then very carefully, try not to mar your clay. Just pull, pull it up. And then position it in another position. And if you do mar it, you can smooth it out a bit. Because that'll show in your final 
final piece. So uh, I don't need to show any more than that. I mean, you just keep going until you're happy with it. So this is the resulting um, texture mat that I got when I first first did it. And um, it makes, I'll show you what it makes. Hang on there. Got a little something on here. Uh, it's rolled to the, to the three, but you see now it's actually thinner than, uh, than I started with. So when you put this through your pasta machine, you're going to roll your, your clay that you're going to, uh, your good clay, okay? You're going to roll that to, uh, let's say, probably the third thickest setting or even the fourth thick thickest setting, but the third is probably better. And then you're going to put your, you're going to spray this with water, give it a spray, put your clay on it, and change your, your setting on your pasta machine to at least two settings uh, thicker. So if I, had, if I had my clay at a three, which is ideal, then I would set my clay at a, at a one. <clears throat> and then it, it comes out quite thin. This is the way it, it comes out. And, uh, and you get a fairly good impression that you can um, paint or whatever you need to do. The, the other thing is... Um, Sometimes you don't want this Im impression, which is, I guess, an Audi, maybe they'd call that. Um, so what I did was I took one of these, like this, uh, that I had run through the pasta machine, and I baked it, and that's basically this. So now when I put this through the pasta machine with a fresh piece of clay on it, same thing, then I get an impression like this, where the dragonflies now are deeper than the, su the surrounding clay. And uh, so that it gives you options. So some texture mats, if you really like them, you're going to want to do both an innie and an outie. And that's, that's basically how you do it. You, you run a piece through and then you bake that piece and now you have an innie and an outie. So that's what I want to say about that. <laughs> so the other thing, okay, let's get the, the other piece of clay. Now the ammonite... And things that are more dimensional, um, this is how I decided to, uh, to, to do them. So I've got a piece of foam. This is for shaping flowers, but even uh, like a telephone book would, would work. Um, something with a little bit of a give to it, even a pocket book uh, would work. So you put your clay on that. And then uh, this has already been dusted with um, the cornstarch. And then I'm going to take my ammonite and I'm going to rock it a little bit back and forth and put in a fair bit of pressure because I've got this give from the uh, foam sheet. And then when I lift it, I've got a pretty good impression. Now you can get an even better impression if, let's see, we'll rock this one again. Now, if I keep this in place and pull it up and just put a little pressure on the inside, I should get a little bit more impression. Well, let's actually, let's try this one because this inside here is not very good. So we'll try another one on the other side. My inside should be better. And I'll pull it up. And now I have a little bit more impression. Caught a little bit of that center, center part. And you can just kind of flatten it out a little bit with your fingers. So anyways, that's how I did that. I just kept going in different uh, patterns. I used both sides of my, my fossil so that some spiraled one way, some spiraled the other way. And, uh, and that's what I ended up with, with this. So that's what I know about making texture mats. I'm sure there's lots of other information out there. Um, I thought maybe the way I did it might add a little bit to, uh, to your knowledge. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.